These are what the narcissists think when they do the smear campaign. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. There's a compelling reason why a significant number of individuals, after interacting with a narcissist, find themselves seeking professional help such as therapy. The primary reason lies in the fact that they are utterly drained, both emotionally and mentally, and are left grappling with the aftermath of their encounter. They are likely trying to piece together the puzzle of their experience, questioning the nature and dynamics of the relationship they just navigated. In this quest for understanding, they begin to acquire a wealth of knowledge about the characteristics of unhealthy relationships, extending beyond just narcissistic ones. In this complex scenario, there are also individuals who find themselves on the receiving end of severe backlash. This backlash often stems from the narcissist's relentless efforts to twist narratives and portray you, the victim, as the wrongdoer. Their objective is clear, they want everyone around them to harbor ill feelings towards you, they long for others to listen to their version of events, to empathize with them, to see them as the victim. Their desire to be perceived as the victim doesn't merely stem from their narcissistic tendencies, but can also be characteristic of individuals who are emotionally unstable or have developed certain defense mechanisms. They strive to ensure that everyone around them harbors resentment towards you, demonizes you, and views you as the villain. For most individuals with narcissistic personality traits, this form of behavior is essentially a manipulative tactic. It could potentially be a defense mechanism, orchestrated to conceal their actual actions within the relationship. More often than not, this is indeed the case. Many individuals find it difficult to confront their own actions and behaviors over the course of a relationship. They are unwilling to shoulder the blame, averse to introspection, and reluctant to admit to their mistakes. They would much rather say, you know, I didn't really do a good job here, or I mishandled this situation. Instead of doing so, they prefer to weave a different narrative to deviate attention, thereby avoiding feelings of guilt or shame. This, unfortunately, is a common trait among individuals who are narcissistic or emotionally unhealthy. Regardless of the underlying reasons or the dynamics at play, I understand that the situation you find yourself in is incredibly frustrating and draining. It's exceedingly difficult to look at someone and realize that you barely know who they truly are. To discover that they're capable of fabricating stories you know to be untrue is a challenging ordeal to endure. What I urge you not to do is take this personally. I understand that this is a tall order, as it often feels like a direct personal attack. The first group of people I want to address are those who struggle with low self-esteem, the individuals who readily accept blame when told they're the problem. Unfortunately, these individuals are most vulnerable to a further decline in self-esteem. If everyone around you starts believing that you are indeed the problem, based on the stories being circulated, it inevitably chips away at your self-perception. It seeds self-doubt, which makes you question your actions, maybe I am the problem, perhaps I did something wrong. This disconnect from your own narrative, your truth, is harmful as it aligns you with the rest of the audience, those who are swallowing the bait and believing the stories. However, this is not the purpose of our journey. We're not here to be manipulated or gaslit. Our goal is to learn how to take the best care of ourselves. The treatment you're receiving, as unpleasant as it may be, presents an opportunity for personal growth. It's a harsh way of learning to stand up for yourself, to love yourself, and to believe in yourself. I'd like to stress that dealing with such a person and such a situation can be an eye-opener. It can be a catalyst for self-improvement and personal development. It's a rough road to tread, but it's a path that leads to a stronger, more self-assured you. So, while it's important to acknowledge the pain and frustration, it's equally crucial to recognize the potential for growth and empowerment. This person, despite their narcissism and manipulative tactics, is inadvertently teaching you to advocate for yourself, to love yourself unconditionally, and to have faith in your own abilities. A person, particularly someone narcissistic, can shatter your self-image and affect your self-esteem. This leaves you extremely vulnerable as you become susceptible to the opinions of others. This implies that your self-perception hinges on how others perceive you. If they harbor negative views about you, it's likely to influence your own self-view. This poses a significant problem. It signifies that your self-worth is contingent upon how others perceive you, 
which in turn determines your self-esteem. This is not how self-perception and self-worth should be formed. It's crucial to understand that certain individuals possess incredibly fragile egos. To protect these egos, they resort to tormenting others or fabricating false narratives. You, unfortunately, become their emotional punching bag. In some twisted way, this dominance over your emotions gives them a sense of control and power. They control your self-perception, thus controlling how you feel about yourself. Your emotional turmoil signifies their control over you, and they derive a perverse pleasure from this. Your suffering is of no consequence to them. Their sole focus is on the control they exert over you. They manipulate how you feel in every moment, whether you're happy or sad. This feeds their narcissistic supply. When we discuss the term narcissistic supply, we often assume it refers to making the narcissist feel good, thereby making you a good source of narcissistic supply. However, the concept extends beyond this. You could be having a terrible day and still serve as a good source of narcissistic supply. The narcissist could ruin a perfectly pleasant day with a single comment or action, dictating your emotional state for the rest of the day. Despite causing you pain and misery, you're still a good source of narcissistic supply. The narcissist doesn't care about your suffering, as they lack empathy. Their primary concern is maintaining control, which is a defining characteristic of a narcissist. Many individuals often believe that narcissists relish seeing them suffer. While this might be marginally true in a twisted sense, it's not entirely about your suffering as it is about the control and influence they exert over you. Anyone who is not emotionally healthy or is narcissistic tends to engage in such behavior. They spread rumors, paint you in a negative light, and position themselves as the victim or the hero. Their aim is to portray you as the problem. These are individuals who are driven by revenge. They seek retribution for something you were unable to provide them or something you ceased to provide. Their revenge is their way of retaliating for your actions or inactions. At this point, you may be questioning the difference between positive and negative narcissistic supply and why the narcissist would want revenge. Here's the thing, if you provided a positive narcissistic supply, meaning you didn't hold them accountable, you did everything they wanted, and you held them in high esteem, they became dependent on that. If you suddenly stop viewing them in that light, they still need to extract narcissistic supply from you. This is where revenge comes into play. They aim to hurt you, inflict pain, and create drama to replenish their narcissistic supply. It now becomes a negative supply, fueled by conflict and your suffering. Much of the tantrums and drama they stir up is a result of their own suffering. They are hurting because you're no longer providing them what they once received or because they've done something wrong and are unwilling to accept responsibility. Thus, causing you pain becomes their way of making you suffer as they are. It's a convoluted cycle of emotional manipulation, a hallmark of narcissistic behavior. It's vital to remember not to take things personally when dealing with a narcissist. Their actions and words are part of their habitual behavior, designed to weave a narrative that paints them as the victim. This is textbook manipulation, and it's crucial not to internalize it. This isn't about you, it's about their need to sway others to their side. You might be wondering, okay, I understand not taking it personally and not reacting, but what should I actually do in this situation? Let me provide some guidance. First and foremost, it's essential to maintain your composure. This may sound straightforward, but many people struggle with it. They become reactive, resorting to shouting, arguing, and expressing their anger due to the narcissist's actions and words. They resist the unfolding reality. However, it's crucial to understand that your emotional reactions will only escalate the situation. I urge you to uphold your dignity. Do not deviate from your character, regardless of the circumstances. You should not allow yourself to be swayed by someone's words or actions that you find disagreeable. A person who is strong, healthy, and confident in themselves doesn't change their character based on someone else's opinions. Remember, not everyone will say what you want to hear. Not everyone will like you, and not everyone will believe your side of the story. However, these aspects are insignificant in the grand scheme of things. What truly matters is how you see yourself, how you handle difficult situations, and how you maintain your self-respect. 
Your self-worth should not be contingent upon the views or actions of a narcissist. By keeping your composure and upholding your dignity, you demonstrate your strength and resilience, proving that you won't be swayed by their manipulative tactics. This approach, while challenging, is the most effective way to handle interactions with a narcissist. Remember, your strength lies within you, not in the opinions and actions of others. It's crucial to comprehend the motivation behind the narcissist's behavior. Is it a defense mechanism triggered by their wrongdoings during your relationship, causing them to feel uncomfortable and hence resorting to this behavior? Are they narcissistic and accustomed to receiving admiration from you, which has now ceased, prompting them to provoke you in order to elicit reactions that feed their narcissistic supply? What you need to do is to detach emotions from the situation, enabling you to objectively analyze why the person is behaving the way they are. Successfully doing this will help you refrain from reacting impulsively. Our aim is to maintain calm energy, to stay true to our authentic selves. We're not seeking to act erratically or out of character. We're also not aiming to internalize every action of the narcissist, which essentially amounts to a tantrum. As an important side note, if you find yourself in a legal situation with such an individual, it's of utmost importance to document everything. Record every instance of threats, manipulations, and unhealthy interactions. These records can serve as crucial evidence in court proceedings. The next step I'm going to suggest might be what you're eagerly anticipating, you have every right to share your side of the story. However, when you do so, I want you to speak with confidence and calmness. It's important to share your experiences without the expectation of agreement or validation from others. What you're doing is merely stating facts. You might even consider educating others about what manipulation and narcissistic abuse truly involve. Be mindful when doing this, though. Keep your emotions in check, avoid expressing anger or resentment. Your approach should be factual, clear-cut, and devoid of emotional bias. The final advice I have for you involves introspection and self-improvement. Begin to work through your ego. Understand that this situation isn't about fairness or gaining universal approval. It's a strategic game that teaches you to retain your self-identity, seek self-validation, and become independent of external validation. My heart sincerely goes out to you if you're currently navigating this challenging situation. It's undoubtedly a tough journey, and there are several aspects you'll need to work through. Maintaining calmness and composure, not reacting impulsively, and working through your ego are all significant challenges in themselves. While it's relatively straightforward to understand the logic behind the narcissist's actions, it's often harder for many to avoid taking it personally. This is a recurring struggle that requires continuous effort and resilience. If you're going through this, I encourage you to view the situation as an opportunity for self-improvement. Consider it a practice to strengthen your assertiveness, enhance your calmness and confidence, articulate your facts, and seek self-validation rather than relying on others. I hope you found this video insightful. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and share it with others who might benefit from it. Also, consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care, everyone.